So what you're looking at here is Blender 4.2 and I have this wooden floor. This is completely procedurally generated inside Blender, including the herringbone pattern and of course the wooden texture itself. One of the advantages of using a system like this would be that you can change settings on the fly without having to mess with the geometry or having to rely on image textures and UV unwrapping. So here's a quick demo scene that I've set up and these six parquet flooring shaders are part of the version 3 update for my shader pack. I'm calling it Surface Essentials. And you can see that these are all like generators. These are not like one-off shaders. So these are more comparable to something like Substance Designer. These are not using any image textures, neither for the patterns nor for the wooden texture. So you can change literally anything from maybe the gaps to using the chevron switch which can immediately turn the herringbone pattern into a chevron version. One more popular variation of this would be double herringbone which you can easily get or a few more steps will get you the square basket pattern which is even more interesting. And on top of all of that you can just use the random seed setting to get a completely unique variation every time. And you can crank up the varnish strength and that will give you a really polished modern look. So let me finally switch to the parquet planks, which is like the most commonly used flooring option out there. Now look at the top right for a close up of the wooden texture as I change some of the settings. The changes are subtle, but if you're really trying to mimic a particular type of wood, then I think this is the best tool out there. You have all of the settings here and you can build it on your own. I hope the naming system for the settings are intuitive and you can get a hang of it after using it for a couple of times. But I still have the documentation online so you can get a really in-depth look at what each setting is doing. And with so many different settings that are exposed in the materials panel, I think for 90% of your daily work would never require you to dive into the node setup itself and make changes there. You can even use the compression settings and this will give you tightly packed bands which is really interesting that this is possible in Blender. I've also exposed a few color settings for the materials panel, but these are mostly like surface level. So if you just need to shift the hue just a little bit or add a slight hint of a shade of wood, you can do that here and most of your requirements should be fulfilled. But if you just switch to the shader editor for once and go two levels deep into the texture generator, you get this base color color ramp you can completely break down the default colors here and you can start from scratch basically and whatever your target wood type is, you can just nail that completely. So let's end this demo with a time lapse of all of the patterns that I have here. Out of all of this, I think the Chantilly pattern was the most mathematically complex. So I'm really proud of this one. And you can really get a lot of variation with this. And also the herringbone pattern which is like the most commonly used and you can get a lot of variation out of it you can round off the corners it's really like four or five different patterns in the herringbone generator and although we didn't talk about it much but i think the hexagon pattern is like really interesting and of course we have the generic planks i hope this was at least interesting and if you want to get these i have a link in the description see you there